Hey besties, welcome back to another UV printing video. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Angeline and in this video I'm going to show you how to do race effects using spot UV. When you print multiple times in the same spot, UV ink builds up and that's what creates the raised texture. We'll start from a plain white notebook to create this full color recipe book. You only get a peek because I don't want to spoil the surprise and if you stick around till the end, I'll share with you my ink usage and what it costs to print this notebook. We're going to use Adobe Illustrator to set up our design files and we'll also assign which areas get raised. Now without further ado, let us proceed. In Adobe Illustrator, I have both my template and vector artwork for the notebook. To keep it organized, let's name our layers. We'll call one design and the other one we'll name it template. By clicking this little eyeball here, you can toggle off and on the different layers and see which is which. For the raised effects, I decided that I want to raise all of the flowers and petals to give it some dimension. So I'll select those pieces and create a separate layer. And we'll name it raised. I'll copy and paste those into that raised layer. I'll toggle this off real quick so you can see what I pasted on that layer. And get the other flowers in there as well. You know what, let's include the butterfly too. By turning off our main design layer, you can see which parts are going to be raised. And I included the text as well. I want to assign the Verseworks swatch for white so that we add a buildable white layer. And we want to duplicate all these vector shapes and then assign it the white underneath the color. I need to expand my artwork first. This allows me to change it into that gray swatch for Roland White and it's not going to print gray, it's just assigned a gray color on the computer so that we can see it. Right now the white is on top of the color but I want it behind so I'll send it behind. Let's turn on the main design so that we can see what it looks like. It looks pretty good. I want to make sure that um, I get a good bleed on here so that um, the green covers the whole front of the notebook. So I'm just going to stretch that out a little bit. Let's do a quick recap here. We have our three separate layers and I'll toggle off um, everything except the template so we can see that. And then we'll look at our design. That looks good. And then we want to see the raised and I'm going to move one of these pieces just to make sure the white is behind and undo that. We want to save all of these layers on different files without moving anything around. That's how you get perfect alignment. Alright, so I dropped all of my three files into Versaworks and you can see we have the template, we have the design file, and the raised file. Print the template file first and I didn't change any of the settings, they're just default. I don't really care because it's just the template. For this notebook, I like putting um, which way is up so I named the top where the top should face. Um, so let's get our notebook in there facing the right way. And we'll also make sure that the bookmark is tucked safely underneath so that nothing catches while the print head is moving. In VersaWorks, we'll open up the settings for the design and I'm going to do high quality. Um, since the notebook is white, I'm just going to keep it CMYK. And by doing that, it actually prints much quicker. I'll change the setup height so that it clears the notebook. A tip for perfect alignment is to never change the origin and I'm going to keep it still at 0, 0. Okay, layer 2 printing in full color. Our first layer is done and we're not going to touch it so that we don't mess this up. Um, I'm just giving you a little peek. 
all right so here's our final layer we're going to be doing the raised effects so let's open up settings and we'll go into quality i'm going to choose high quality because the more ink the better for that raised texture i'm going to select white and cmyk when i zoom in you can see it has this pinkish tint that means that uh, it's reading the white layer underneath not to get into overprinting we need to click here to ignore the default settings and i'm going to do the max overprint which is three times it's going to take a whopping 39 minutes luckily i didn't have to sit here and wait i just let it print while i went and fed my dogs and then i had dinner as well and then i came in to check on it a couple of times just to see the progress I felt a little impatient so I hit pause and I used my flashlight to get a better look. So far it's looking really cool. Um, I was able to zoom in with the lens and see that it does have that raised look. Okay, this looks really cool. So the flowers really look like they're standing apart from the background. Uh, it kind of reminds me of like acrylic paint because it has a little bit of a thicker raised effect. As promised, let me break down the ink cost for you. What's cool about VersaWorks is that when you load up your file, it tells you how much ink you're going to use for that specific print file. So for my template, I have 0.01 milliliters. My main full color design is 0.09 millimeters. And finally, the three layer overprint is 0.18 milliliters. The cartridges are 220 milliliters. Assuming each cartridge is 100 bucks after tax and shipping, we'll divide our ink cost with a number of milliliters and then times that by the usage. Our total cost for this comes out to 13 cents. Not bad, right? But hold on one second because I need to elaborate here. That is just the cost to print it. This doesn't include operational costs like when it runs a cleaning cycle, your power usage, consumables, or even your labor costs. You still need to get paid. Don't be like me when I first started. I counted my costs down to every single penny and tried to price as low as possible to stay competitive, right? Not to get too in depth with this, but please, please, please add a nice cushion of profits to your product. Leave some margin for error and pay yourself nicely. Competitive pricing is not your only advantage here with this awesome machine. And that goes for everything that you make and sell. Now, back to this. Did it take long? Yes. Was it worth it? Also yes. If you have the time and patience, I'd highly recommend trying this out. Maybe this isn't your main business, but maybe you make these once in a while and sell them at good margins. That's it for this video. Curious about something that you want me to try out? Drop a comment down below and we shall see. Don't forget to subscribe to catch the next video. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.